the other one. There we go. Let's see. Okay. We are live. So, let's explain what we're doing tonight. Tonight, it's a majority going to be documentation if we get time. So we're going to look at documentation. We're going to look at uh, uh, Verilog example and Python uh, program that wraps around a driver software. So our goal is to um, understand this uh, product I got. So let me see if I can show the screen. You see it on the screen and I can show it on my face cam real quick. Let's see, right? We have this. So this is what a relatively, I guess, I mean, it's a little older product, maybe three or four years old. Um, we're doing with a USB 3 um, capable uh, FTDI chip. Um, we're going to look at what the max performance is of this chip. This is a, it's using a 32-bit bus. And I want to understand um, how this chip works, so how the dev board works, how the, um, how the chip works, and what the interface that the FPGA is negotiating for this, and where are the features that we can do. So, um, I mean, this is... I am always meant for this YouTube channel to be kind of a, a look into my development process. And I wanted you to see live what I do to develop. So the point of this so far is for you to see how I go about understanding the documentation, how I go understanding the devices, so that when it comes down to designing and debugging the system, I know what to expect, I know what to look at, I know kind of the gotchas, the troubleshooting, and that helps me understand what's going on. So here is the boring part of development, right? Where you get to read a ton of uh, documentation. So first we're gonna go look at the, oh, and the board. I have a few FMC boards here. I have a, um, a KU uh, Kintex Ultra Scale board and I have the ZCU 104 board that does, uh, does uh, FMC. I don't have any other FMC boards, so I would like to get one. I would like to look at if we can if there is a affordable FMC board. Let's um, let's see FPGA board list. So there's there's a um, right. So this is this is let's let's start here real quick. So this is the ultimate um page to look for affordable FPGA dev boards. This is it's a good place to start. Um, Opal Kelly, um, a little bit on the expensive side. Um, so let's look at we want FMC. Um, you don't even tell me if there's an FMC, I guess. Okay, that, that is a little disappointing to me. Um, I know that the Nexus 7 boards for the Xilinx, so if we go to Xilinx, we look at... Um, if we look at... Does that not have it? I don't know, the, I'm pretty sure that one has it. Right? So we have this board. Um, so New Model Lab is a good place to look for. Damn, that one doesn't. That one doesn't either. Eesh. Um, yeah, let's look at FPGA boards. We want an FMC connector. Um, let's see if we can find some. We have FMC modules. So this one definitely has them. So let's look at the Arctic 7, Spartan 7, the Kintec 7, and the Zinc. I will not do anything else at the moment. And let's uh hmm if I apply my filter. Enter. Okay. Um <laughs> that is the night fury, right? That is totally what the night fury is. Uh, or the light fury or the board. Oh, two gigs, that's good. Only a dash two. Did you do four lanes on sword? Um, let me see what the back looks like. Show me the back. Oh, this looks like exactly like the other board. JTAG headers. Um, Q spy one gig. Here are two gigs for lanes. Fig down CMOS oscillator. <laughs> That's a funny product and really expensive. Sheesh. Um, let's go back here. Um, where are my FMC connectors? I want FMC connectors. That's a carry board that has an FMC, but um, 
That's not a bad one. Don't like that price. I want an affordable FMC board. Sorry, we're going on a little quick tangent. I'm just curious what options I have. There we go. The this is a should be an affordable-ish um, board. Uh, I guess the next is video. Uh, hmm. Anyone no longer for sale? Okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, A links FPGA right. Um, let's see A links. A links sometimes has good products. This might be the most affordable one in Nexus Video. I might be able to get a used one from my school. I am going to look into that. Um, that board. Ooh. That is not a play. Oh, is this academic? Apparently out of stock, March 2020. Dead boards are good. My school also has a lot of those um, products. Um, so these ones have a lot of... Um, that's a zinc. That's not a bad board. The price tag is on it. Um, that has an FMC and a cool PCIe. And PSOC, these are 70B. Ooh, that would be a cool video one, right? Ooh, that would be a cool one to do a GPIO one on. Huh? All right, cool GPU config. Oh, look at this. I have numbers I don't understand. Uh, price is 2K. Kind of reasonable for what that is. How about this guy? Probably the same price. Ooh, 1800 Yeah. Yeah, kind of solid FPGA. They're loading so slowly. Um... Okay, um, so that's kind of all. I mean, we can look at Elbow Kelly, but they're going to be expensive. Um, there is a Kindex 7 one right there with FMC. And you got to be careful. So when you look at FMC, you need to always look at the uh, documentation and confirm how many transceivers are on it. Okay, so um, yeah, that's going to be it for now. That's not a bad price. 700 for uh, PCIe. Um, how many PCIe lines? Times eight? Ooh, yeah, that's not bad at all. DDR. That built in DDR is at the SODIM. I like the video one better. Um, yeah, this is way too expensive. Okay. Uh, I mean, you can always try eBay. All right, eBay. Let me go what? Like FPGA, FMC. You have a oh, nice breakout board. Uh, these are kind of new products. Um, oh, what was I looking for? HSMC? SMC. Yeah, not the best so far. I was looking at the HSMC. Uh, something better thank you okay cool so okay sorry to go on that tangent i was looking for fmc boards um so yeah let's start working our way through the documentation um so we have this board and we want to understand what we're doing here um has the following features uh supports uh usb3 super speed five gigabits per second so which is awesome that's what we're going to try to do to high speed and USB to full speed. Um, okay. We got the board. Let's start looking through this documentation. I want to see if I could try to get mail one of this. So We got the 32 by one. Configurable five o'clock. Do do do. We probably want to do 2.5 to get the high speed. Okay. Moving through, moving through. These are the USB connectors. Makes sense. Um, power jack. Um.
So that's a good question. What are we looking for? We're looking for, uh, I think, a 256 synchronous 5 mode. Okay, let me. I want to review these jumpers real quick so I know what's where they are. So we got jumper JP1. Um, this is JP2. Okay, we have one and two with the V bus. And we have two and three. Yeah. Um, so voltage level, JP3. Uh, we have one and two, which is default, which is good. That's, I think, what we want. Um, which JP6 for that. Um, okay. And JP4 and 5. We're on one and two. So we got multi channel FIFO, four channels. Interesting. Um, reset and wake up. Okay, remote wake up, drive low and pre press down. Um, FFC connectors. Got a lot of pins out. So we got the 32 bit one. I think it's all of it, yeah. Um, board schematics. Okay, pretty straightforward. And that is very hard to read. So we have our FMC here. And where are our USBs? Here is our USB. Here is our data. Is that 16? Uh, it's just 16 data there. Uh, here's the one we have. USB and the 32 bits data. We got this big boy. This is DFT00. Okay, so we got this uh, big boy one. Um, we're doing... Uh, here, so I verified with my board that we could do these connections. And on most FPJs, you should be able, we're not doing the transient reports, but we should be able to do this on most FPJs. Um, power configuration. There are three modes of powering the FIFA module. Um, connect the board to the FIFA master board and standard FMC or something recommended. Um, open. Oh, so I want to keep that one open. Okay. JP1 is open and JP2, two, three. Okay. I like that. Open, two, and three. Okay. Is that all? Is that all we got? That is all we got. So now we're up to um, looking at the chip documentation to understand how it works and what are, what are our features in this. So let's look at the this uh, high-speed FTDI chip, which would be great for um, putting on development boards and final products, have a high-speed USB. Um, okay, so a block diagram. Um, we have a wake up, a reset. Uh, this is the five gigabits, the 480, five of bus, the LDR, 30 megahertz crystal. Okay, okay, looks like 32 bus interface. Um, yeah, doesn't actually not that big of a documentation, so let's figure out how this works. Okay, so it might be good to understand these pins. So we got a clock, we have data. Parallel bytes, but bleh. we have a byte enable. I O it's input or output. Okay, so we have these are I O pins, so we can read or write these. So 
that limits it. And we could have different channels that are reading and writing. Um, okay, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, so transfer FIFO output signal is a minimum of one byte of space available to write. Only write to the FIFO when signal when the when this signal is logic zero. Status valid output signal optional. The minimum of one byte of data available to read. Only read from FIFO when the signal is this. Okay, reserved. Um, write enable input signal, quest input signal, multi channel. So we have two modes, right? We have a multi channel mode and a giant synchronous mode. Um, enable, output, enable. We're probably going to try the massive mode. Um, then by default, when the USB is active, I don't know, USB suspended, reserve, do not connect. Okay. Uh, GPIO ports, and these are all connected. So let's go look at that. Uh, this guy right here, right? We have D clock, we have GPIO, wake up, reset. Um, the data, some of the signals, byte enables some of the signals, data, another D clock. That's good. Oh, yeah, we have the 601 one. Um, data, byte enables. It enables data. Yeah, so pretty basic interface. Um, so we got four byte enables, use it for synchronous mode, and we need to figure out how the multi chip mode works. Okay. Um, okay, FIPO management. We allocate to each pipe. Do, 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 do. By a 16k byte addition to the pipes, I had a computer with high drive strength. They have been reset to hmm. um, the FIFO bus protocol. Mo is a but FIFO bus is a slave inside to handle multi channel FIFO connectivity. There's a total of eight channels, four ins and four outs. Clock is out. Um, the clock output to the FIFO bus master. So that's an <coughs> <coughs> with one in and one out FIFO channel supported by this bus protocol clock. Okay. Um, yeah, those uh, buffers are that big. Um, okay. Um, regulator, reset generator, wake up. Hmm, battery change detection, GPIO. These are multifunctional pins. The functions are configured by the chip configuration data. The chip configuration sets the GPIO phones as FIFA mode and configuration input. And the power up fight to chip sets the yeah, GPIO. So we have a simple GPIO to handle that. To enable GPIO, the chip must be updated to, to set the GPIO function. In a BCD mode, the chip must be updated to set the BCD. When R is configured to support BCD, GPIO set the output, and output changes according to um, BCD detection result. No USB detection or BCD detection are ongoing. Then our downstream port. Charging downstream port, decayed charging port. Okay. Ugh. Here comes the meat and the potatoes. We gotta... We gotta figure out how these protocols work so we can be, figure out uh, how we can use this interface. Um, we have a slave bus and it's nine handle multi-channel activity. The bus protocol will support uh, four directional buses. One USB out, one USB in, in endpoints an endpoint so it can't be a master clock is a clock output the channel number donated the second is channel one two three map to USB point endpoint is number two to five usb out endpoint is channel one is donated as usb channel one usb in endpoint is channel one is donated as usb channel one in okay i don't know enough about usb stuff and endpoints to talk about that um of course one of the five is is transmitted from the host to device for data transfer from the usb device to host um, it's a bus press signal and it's active low. Is the bus data received? Acknowledge signal is active low. Um, optional signal master can ignore the signal. Is the bus slave to the bus master? FIFO idle status valid signal and it's low active. It uses a 32 bus when the bus is in idle state. 
by the bus master and is driven by bus later by the private staff to the bus master okay that's interesting so this is cool they're using the data pins to show you the status um when the bus is in idle state data um 31 to 16 7 to 8 v3 are driven high by the bus master um I think I'm the bus master in that situation, right? The FPGA is the bus master. And data 1518 is driven by the bus slave to provide the five of status to the bus master. That's really cool. The upper nimble provides the four out five of status for the lower nimble. They are all active low. Um, for example, at idle, data 12 is logic zero and data eight is zero, which indicates USB channel one is available to send and USB space is empty. Five is empty to receive data respectively. The external bus will start transfer by asserting on the channel that is the first after writes inserted the command page followed by the data when actually inserted the command the bus will send the channel number when it which it intends to transfer data with on data and the read write command on be uh, so that's just the first channel Uh, it's valid. Okay. Command phase master re raid. Master writes. Okay. Pretty basic. This waveform shows a master read transaction of 10 bytes. First, the channel. There are a turnaround for data after command phase and at the end of the day. Are valid at the last word stroke in this transaction. Okay, so we got this. The master. So these are being asserted by the master. The master. That's the valid signal. Um, says I want to do a read. Right, We're doing a read. Um, to do yes, a, no, a write. That is a write. We are writing to the thing. Okay, so channel one right here. One is that's channel one, and we're doing a read. Um, we wait for the turnaround, and that happens, and we read the data. Okay, for 12 bytes of channel one, where the bus tra terminates, tra there are MBE. Okay, so same thing, right? We're doing a read. And zero, one, two. These that are both active. Okay. Um. In multi trip so master the bus master will be able to read out the maximum data in the RM1 transaction, i.e., when the FT is configured in the one channel mode, the bus will be able to read out 4K bytes, 2K in respect to and write operation, but expects to be transferred over to US bus to do, do. Okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. If the bus completes a 4K write in one transaction, then the data will be transferred onto the bus in a, in a full size packet. Yeah, what's the maximum performance here, right? Um, we're doing 32 bits at 100 megahertz. That's only like 32 megabytes. That is that is not enough to support high speed data, is it? Say 400 megabytes. Um. I was right that this is only a hundred megahertz channel. So a hundred megahertz times thirty-two. Oh yeah, it's gonna be three point two. Okay. 
That's 3.2 gigabit. Let's change into yeah, 400 megabytes. Okay, maybe I was doing my calculations wrong earlier. So we can only support 400 megabytes. I was hoping to get some, you know, gigabit data rates, but eh, that's okay. Um, where were we? Okay. Um, do do do. Um. So we have a write, and we immediately send the data. Um. We have, a, we have a FIFO mode read followed by write. And it's like the worst picture ever. Okay, uh, I'm interested in two five, the 245 synchronous FIFO mode protocol. One in, one out, FIFO channel with this. Um, and mass, it can be configured to 66 or 100 megahertz. DX is an output signal, transfer FIFO empty. Okay, the one actually indicates exactly low and indicates the receiver FIFO has data. Oh, we use an input signal. Data okay. Um, we have a synchronous FIFO mode master read. Um, so sounds good. Okay, um, so I just remembered something. Um, the right, okay. So, how do we determine the clock? Um, so I want we want to look to see how the clock is configured in a bit. Um, I so said, where's the clock here? Oh, let's just go 100. The only default clock is 100 megahertz. Okay, it says configurable clock, so let's see in here. Okay. Seems good all around. Absolute mind to do to do. Okay. Um, I, I, I need to learn about USB power configuration, so I'm gonna read this for a bit. Um okay, so we have our USB connection. Um I get various ports. Three three, two V one eight. Okay, yeah, so there's a cutoff. Um, self power configuration. Application example. Um, multi channel FIFO mode. Um, okay. Are we done? So we talked about this configurable clock. But how do we configure the clock, right? We have this 100 megahertz clock. I guess if you use 1.8 volt, it's 66. That's, that's all I got. Okay, so. Ugh. Um, let's talk about maximum performance, right? We have a quick note here. I'm curious. Understand. PCR, the OS, the USB, the USB host, the USB device design. We will not address the can reach, but rather what we can do on this device, yada, yada. Mm hmm. Um, throughput or 32 bit bus 400 megabytes. Sounds right. I just gotta make a note real quick. Something else. Okay. Um, size configuration. Okay. Mode configurations. We talked about that already. Timing diagram. Example, 
Um, we get 80% performance, right? We give the Death Berry. The ISO can either come from Fifo or Handle. Do, 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 do. Okay. Um, idle. Fifo Death, Fifo Death. So when we have, uh, when we use more of the Fifo, we can get more uh, of the total bandwidth. That's that. That's a good number to see right there. Let's see a transfer data like that. Um, versus FIFO size. Figure shows, gives a FIFO data rate when the IO period changes. Okay, is there anything special in this one? Okay, we have a streamer here. We should go figure out where I can get this application and we can test it. That'd be a fun thing. I think the Python does. Okay, cool. So the highest we'll be able to achieve in here is 363 megabytes. We'll keep that in mind. Um, bus chip integration. USB host, USB device, USB. Okay, um, let's see. Does this provide any interesting information? Well, okay, nothing really interesting there. Bus master notes, let's see. Oh, this is uh, what the design is on the FPGAs. We'll look at this in a second. Um, yeah, documentation. Where's the example designs? They totally had example designs. Um, FT601 FPGA example, um, software examples. So, do do do. So, we want the Spartan 32 one. Yeah, we're gonna go look at that. Um, we'll save that to the B drive real quick. Yeah, up. Um, do do. Oh, that was the app note we're reading. And we want the Python example here. Go through those two things next. Um, okay. So this is what the FPGA example is. So let's talk. This would be a good thing to go through. Um, maybe they'll explain that a little bit better. So we have the IO. We have air. Must be something of anding or oring these things. Are these other signals? I did not see these signals on our connector. Oh, the FT601. This is all we care about down here. Um, flow control, uh, loopback mode, loopback data, stream data, memory data, refresh registers. Okay, let's see what we got going here. I understand how this works now. So general operation, we're idle right here. Um, master read, middle, master write. So this is just a, uh, maybe a little loopback. Um, okay. Channel indicates the master buffers are full, indicates the slave status, but for compare current loopback and streaming, auto recovery procedure. Oh. Okay, we have the files. Um, let's just explain the files. Here's the Altera. Yay, Altera, I don't care. FPJ. Looks good. Not the board I'm using. An Opal Kelly board. I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. And source code. Okay, so yeah, let's go crack open the source code, right? Let's go show in folder. D drive. Um, we're gonna extract this that right there. Um, yeah, so go let's go look at the source code. Um, I hate Verilog. I mean, I love Verilog. <laughs> um, so this is a, if you look at the, this project right here, this XIS file, yeah, this one right here. So this is a ISE project. 
We will not be doing an ISC project for this, but this is HTML. Ah. That's interesting. Ooh. Um. Um, so, an ISC config. So, we're going to be looking here. Uh, it's a backup file. Do they have a backup file? Move this to a uh, new instance. And we're going to uh, uh, here we go. Um, Okay, so backup file. Yeah, interesting enough. So let's look at this top file. Um, GPIO control signals. Type of slave. I don't think these are actually hooked up, right? Oh, these are. These are other things, potentially. <laughs> um... That's the interface. Okay, master FIFO IO. Um, so these are going to do tri state first. So we should follow the route of data. The so data, we probably should look at the master FIFO next. Okay, okay. So yeah, let's see what we got. I you can tell that they did great documentation in this whole thing. I mean, okay, they got some things, but like, um, okay. Oh, that's a very simple conversion of things. Nice. Um, so probably yeah, we probably want to go to the state machine next. Where's that block diagram we were looking at? Hey, right, let's go up. It's the top of this. Um, so I think that was just a flow control. So I think we're going to a state machine next. Maybe that was just the IO control. Um, so yeah, let's go check out the uh, the finite state machine. Uh, this is the state machine they describe. It'd be interesting to look through that a little bit more clearly. Calling any modules. So this is a state machine that they describe in the documentation, right? This little write or read state machine where we'll loop back our streaming data. But it's just the channel that determines if it's streaming or not. Okay, what are we looking at next? Um, the control. Um, controls the internal read right? is written for a specific case of master five loop back. Um, connect to the memories. Write address counter, read address counter, read FIFO. Okay, and it probably just writes a loop back. Um, what's this? Um, okay, yeah, let's just start from the top. Um, checks the receive data. Um, it checks the receive data. I'm not sure where it is. Um, because we have this generate, this model generates the streaming data. Um, okay, just some very basic streaming data. Um, IO top and the prefix. Very basic interface. I was trying to look for these actual libraries of stuff. Um, yeah, we should see in the top level. Uh, finite state machine. The prefetch. The data checker. Data gen.
Okay. So yeah, it looks pretty basic for me. At the moment, something I mean, at least it's easy enough to follow. So now let's look at this Python release. So this is Python around a wrapper. Um, so yeah, let's start here at the top level of uh, data loopback. Um, there a main at the bottom. Is, is there a main here? This is actually the file I want. Um, um, okay. Data loopback file, write mode, workstation, operator, date, time, Python. Um, uses. Ah. <coughs> uh, uh, stress tests for trans size on all channels. Stress tests for a thousand transfer try. Tests for transfer size. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so if we go to main here, we have channels to test, transfer size, stress tests. If platform is, uh, demo, turn off pipe threads. Great. Um, create device info list, number of devices, no devices detected, you do you, get device info, select device. Um, we're going to create a module. Um, open X3 application. Ah. Uh, it looks like it's, uh, Okay, it looks like we're just doing drivers. Um, check if USB 3, 2 or 3. Um, get ship configuration. Where is, um, is that actually ship configuration? Where is the get ship configuration? Get ship configuration. So it's clearly in the driver somewhere. Um, and define the three this devices. X device info or is there any chip configuration right here? Um call FT self handler. Okay, so this is built on you know the driver software DLL. Okay, cool. Um going back to data loopback. Um display chip configuration, cool. Number of channels. If number of channels equals zero, invalid chip configuration for data loopback. Optional feature support. Um, delete invalid channels. Do, do, do. Loop back. Okay, um, where is uh, that one? Process loop back. Channels to test. Um, okay. Do, do, do. Create loop back. Well, um, a queue and a queue. Channel to test. Um, cards. Thread start. Thread append. Um, right, that's the function, right? For loopback channels to complete, um, channel thread function. Here's the channel thread function. We have a data buffer. Um, okay, we have payloads, we have queues, threading thread, thread reader, thread writer. Um, so we have writers and then we join lots of threading in this sucker. Wow. Um, yeah, let's go look at the writer thread. Here's the writer thread and we have a pipe and a buffer and a size. Um, 
right pipe. Get last air. So yeah, right pipe is where we're writing. And I believe that's here. So we go to right pipe, right? Right pipe. Byte transfers. Do F key U long. Um, we have a pipe. Um, we have the data. We have. Oh, it's this is just creating it as a U long. Yeah, so it seems pretty straightforward, right? We call FT. Wait, I assume the driver. Um, this is a specific man word. Um, a handler. That'd be a handle in here. Something timeout. Handle. Handle. Okay, so yeah, um, we're mostly dealing with driver software, but it's nice that we have a Python platform to test this on. So sorry, this wasn't the most interesting. Um, we'll probably end the stream soon. And we'll probably call that good for now. Um, so any questions before we close up? So next week, we're going to um, implement this on my avnet ku40 board and then from there um we'll get these demos working uh, using the python um so that'd be next tuesday i'm glad we could sit down and look at all this fun um documentation uh verilog code i don't like verilog um and um and uh python code I don't think I have any questions concerning these things at the moment. Seems straightforward. I don't think I have really had time to um, go ahead and adding this to a uh, design at the moment. So, yeah. See ya. Tomorrow will be uh, a game night, and then we'll work on some other things. Have fun.